George the Tech. Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. Well, I thought it was time to give you guys a rundown on how to use specific processing tools in your software. And to kick it off, we're going to start with how to use the equalizers, the tone controls, the EQ settings, the twist away for Mac OS. So let's go through the effects that you get with every Mac. These are plugins that are included when you buy a Mac. These aren't plugins you have to buy or install. They're already there and they're called audio units plugins. And I'll go and take a look in our effects menu and see what plugins you might expect to find. Click effects, go down to where it says audio units and VST. And you'll see I have a number of plugins from third parties. But for now, because I'm showing you Apple's processing, I'm going to look only in the Apple folder. And inside the Apple folder, you'll see a range of different plugins. The ones we're going to go over today are all going to be equalizer or tone control based tools. And there are actually several available to you in here. Um, some of them include, and the ones that I'm going to teach you today are the AU filter. We'll also load AU graphic EQ, AU high pass. AU N-band EQ, AU parametric EQ, and AU multiband compressor, which is really two different types of processors in one. And that's why I wanted to show you at least a little overview of what it does, because it's actually not just a compressor, but also will control the tone. So these are the plugins we're going to cover. That's six different plugins right out of the gate. All of these plugins can control tone, EQ, and that's why I wanted to show you this. There's a lot to learn. Let's dig in. Okay, so let's start with the AU parametric EQ. This is a good one to start with because it's a very simple EQ, about the simplest one that there is. It gives you the ability to choose not just how much you're turning a frequency up and down, but also what frequency precisely you're adjusting. As you can see, as I slide it left to right, I'm adjusting frequency, and that's our pitch. And I can also control something called the Q. And the Q is how much uh, precision this EQ is going to have. Now with this particular EQ, a higher number for the Q means it's more precise. If I want to change it to a less precise or wider curve, I can double click on the number next to Q type a new number, let's try 10. And you'll see now that the curve that's being boosted or cut, added or reduced, or turned up, turned down, right? All different terms meaning the same thing. Uh, it becomes wider. So that means when you're adjusting a parametric equalizer, you're not adjusting exactly the frequency that you see on display. You're adjusting a range of frequencies on either side of that point. And that's a slope that slopes downward, and the Q controls how wide the slope is. So when you're trying to make an adjustment that has very high precision, you want to try to only adjust a specific frequency and not much else, you need a very narrow Q, or a higher, in this particular case, a higher Q value. So I would use 20 as my Q, when I need to find one frequency that's bugging me. That oftentimes is when I'm trying to get rid of a hum or a tone in a space that's always there, oftentimes around 120 hertz. Well, let's take a listen to what this parametric EQ by itself sounds like when I'm boosting. And what I'll do is I'll take some audio I just recorded, play it back on a loop, and I will sweep my EQ. We call it sweeping when we turn the frequency up and down while boosting it so we can actually listen to hear what the result is. So let's try that. One, two, three, four, five. 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 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if you're listening closely, you probably heard a few different frequencies that really stood out to you. They ring, they resonate. And that's because the microphone and the room that I'm in, the microphone EQ itself and my voice, all of these things are interacting and creating certain frequencies that stand out or resonate or ring. Let's find one that really stands out and then reduce the level instead of boosting it so we can hear the change. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two. Seems to be that about 113 hertz, there is a ring or resonance that happens in this room. So now that I've hit it, I've nailed it, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna pull down to reduce the gain. Because if I do, I could probably mess up the frequency where I, which, cause I've got that right where I want it now. I'm gonna change the gain by typing in the gain value that I want. So right now I'm boosting by about 13 dB. I'll double click on the number next to gain. And I'm gonna put in minus 12. Now I'm doing what we would call a notch. I'm notching the EQ uh, at that frequency to reduce that tone. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'll bypass to see if we can hear the difference. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Now this isn't about it sounding better. This is just trying to show you guys how you can hone in on a frequency that sticks out and very precisely reduce it. Again, my most common use of this parametric equalizer is for getting rid of the dreaded 120 hertz humming sound that like air conditioning motors, refrigerators, all sorts of things that use an AC current motor um, create because electricity runs at 60 hertz and an AC motor will make a, what's called a harmonic at exactly double 60 which is 120. And that one's really insidious because it sticks out and it's right in the middle of the voice range. The very, very bottom for women's voice ranges, but more sort of in the meat of the voice range for men. So I will go into my parametric EQ. I will type in 120 hertz. I'll leave the Q very narrow, like you see at 20. And then I'll reduce the gain. Now, I don't want to overdo it. If you overdo this reduction in gain, it will start to change the color of the sound. You'll start to get a a little weirdness in the sound. Sometimes we might call that phasing, or it might just take away too much of the low end of the voice. So putting a precise EQ setting like 120 at a 20 Q factor and reducing it about 10 will do an incredibly effective job at tuning out a 120 Hertz hum in your recordings. Let's move on to another type of EQ. Let's take a look at the high pass filter. This one I probably use way more often than the parametric equalizer. The high pass filter is a bit simpler. It's not controlling frequencies above and below the frequency point. It's only controlling what happens below that point. And that is what our, why we call it a high pass filter. What it's doing is it's passing anything above the frequency we set high pass. Also known sometimes as a low cut because everything below that frequency is being reduced or cut in engineering parlance. Now this particular high pass filter is very simple. All it allows us to do is control what frequency and then something called resonance. I'll explain that in a second. Now the frequency is handy that lets us choose at what point the low frequency is going to be reduced. And it's very easy to hear it as I play this back on a loop. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 